Hi everybody, welcome back to our channel. Um, I hope that everybody's having a really, really great week and a really great Wednesday. Uh, if you're new to our channel, my name is Maggie. You can call me Mags, anything works. And we are getting ready to, to show you guys the second installment of our Back At You podcast. And I am live in New York City. Woo! Woof. I hope that everybody can hear me okay. So today we are going to be talking about sexism in in Broadway since I'm here in New York City on vacation with my family um, and if you didn't get the chance to watch Vaishnavi's podcast on sexism in film she posted that a couple of days ago you should definitely check it out it was really really informative really really good content lots of people taking pictures sorry uh, so today I thought I would kind of give a little bit of history about sexism in Broadway and what's being done and how things have changed and improved now so after doing some research, I discovered that women have actually been in Broadway in the industry since the beginning, which started around 1750 actually. So rep in Broadway has been going along a long time. Uh, but that doesn't mean that it has always been equal, right? So I think that it's pretty fair to assume that in 1750 women did not have the rights that we do now. So we saw a lot of, you know, females in, in Broadway as either, you know, kind of to be show-offy or just as small roles and as, as wives or as damsels in distress, things like that. Um, the industry actually called these kinds of productions princess productions because the lead female role would al al almost always be either some kind of princess or in a, in a position where the male had to take control and had to, to basically run the situation. So we had, we had that um, and this continued into well into the 20s and 30s if you guys know who Cole Cole Porter is he has done some productions that have been um, you know pretty controversial in terms of the portray his portrayal of women same with George Gershwin all kinds of those kinds of artists and these productions have been uh, revived on Broadway they've been revived in other uh, theaters across the country throughout throughout the years even modernly you know uh, anything goes by Cole Porter was Redout revived on Broadway in, I believe, 2011. So it's it's still perpetuating in Broadway culture today, and it's still a really popular, popular type of film. These films where women do not have the the kind of lead roles and the kind of dramatic plot that we often deserve to get. So so that's been going on for a long time, and things have gotten better. Uh, we have some. I found some statistics that show that. Um, you know, women have about 51% of roles in theater in Broadway. So, yay, we love that. But oftentimes they do not play lead roles. Female lead roles only account for something about, you know, 20 to 40% of, of roles, depending on the season, depending on who's writing the show, of course, depending on where the show is being portrayed. You know, Broadway doesn't just exist in New York City. Broadway can be anything that travels across the country that is originally based in Broadway. So things, places like Chicago, Seattle, all kinds of places like that that go across the country. So it just depends on the shows that get taken there, the shows that are, you know, culturally accepted and, and popularized there. So it really just depends. Oh, there's a subway. <laughs> Gotta love the city. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a general history of, of how women have been in theater. Um, it's important to also think about roles outside of acting in Broadway. So for example, um, you know, writing roles, producing roles, the numbers of women in these roles has definitely increased over the years. I think that in terms of the last the last couple of seasons, I think the 2016 season had about 41% of musical director roles were female roles or, you know, done by a woman. So that's that's great. That's definitely an increase from the past. So, so we're getting better, but it's not getting better. Lots of people would argue fast enough. Lots of people would argue that females and women don't want these kinds of positions and roles, which I think is kind of silly. Um, plays are usually written by males, male roles. Um, so we still have this kind of idea that, that women do not get their place in Broadway. So what are we doing about it? What's getting better about it? Where do I stand on it? Um, I, think that, I think that it's getting better, which is wonderful. And I think that Broadway does a better job at taking care of women than film does. I think that there's a stronger place that has already been founded in Broadway for women as opposed to in film. 
Uh, the pay gap is still a huge deal in Broadway. The, the difference between a male lead role and a female lead role can be as much as 10%, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you when you're talking about the kind of money that you get on Broadway, it's 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 a big chunk. Ten percent is a huge chunk, so it's really important that we that we work towards that. That's not just for Broadway; that's for film, that's for you know just society in general. That that's going to be present everywhere. So yeah, that's just kind of a, a a general overview of what's what's going on and what's happening. And I'm really excited to hear Katie's take on sexism in film on Friday. So Katie, back at you.